everyone, Joe Soto here, and we have a really special treat for you today. We have the king of sales, Jeffrey Gittimer, who's going to be joining us. And you're going to hear everything from how he, how everything started for him all the way to his best advice to give you as you come out of this crazy crisis that's taken place here in 2020. So stay tuned and I'll be right back with you. This is the Not Your Average Joe Show, where each week we bring you sales, marketing, and mindset strategies you need to get to your next level. And now here's your host, international business mentor, Joe Soto. Yes, we are live, Jeffrey Gittimer. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> All right. So before uh, we turn some some of this over to Jeffrey, I just want to share uh, a little background. So I think it was early to mid 1990s, Jeffrey, when one of the first books that you had written was this it, the sales bible? Yeah. Uh, the sales bible was one of the first books on sales I ever read, and the reason why I read this book was because my uncle gave me some really good advice. Uh, when I was 19, he says, if you can learn how to sell, you'll never have to worry about money. <laughs> I took that to heart. And Jeffrey, who is the author of not just the sales Bible, which has been revised to look like this, you've probably seen on the bookshelves if you don't already own it, but the multi-million bestseller as well, the little red book of selling. Sorry, Jeffrey, I'm the one holding up all the books this time. And he wrote this, a bunch of other books as well, which oh I have God. and study. Uh, all of them. That's too many to even go through right now. But we'll talk about your newest book. We'll talk about your new book coming. Yeah. Um, more important, uh, Jeffrey, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here, man. It's my pleasure, Joe. Um, I can count on one hand the people that have the most have had the most impact on my business and my career. Um, and you are you're first to come to mind when it comes to sales and being able to generate revenue into the seven figures for my business. So my family thanks you as well. And I thought one of the best ways to, you actually mentioned this in one of your books, I think the uh, platinum book of Cha-Ching that uh, one of the ways to uh, reward uh, people that have helped you um, is by is by thanking them. And I can't think of a better way to thank you than having you as my first guest on the Not Your Average Joe Show. It's so let's start with, um, you've been around for a while. You've written a lot of books. How many, yeah. how many is it? It's like 15 books? Seven, um, on my 17th book will be revealed uh, very shortly. I'll reveal it on the show today. but And I don't want to give away any secrets, but that's <laughs> going to be the name of it. Yes. And because we're in the middle of this COVID thing and people have been forced to do what they should have done five years ago, which is go live. Right. And... Some people will be listening to this as a podcast, but we're actually recording this live mm -hmm. on multiple platforms, including Facebook and YouTube. Um, and I need to be, I, gotta, I, mean, I can add LinkedIn now. I didn't add LinkedIn to this, but I'll be posting it on LinkedIn. Um, but now we're going to be, we're going to be live on LinkedIn as well. I just got that approval. So excited. So Jeffrey, let's, first of all, you're, you're, as, and, and this is not something that you hide. You are the world authority on sales. And I, sure. I've i read, I think, every sales book written. And when a new book on sales comes out, I buy it. Um, but I still go back to the gems and the books. I, I People say to me, what Jeffrey Gittimer book should I read? And my answer is all of them. <laughs> so it's really well, the answer is yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. Yeah, the answer is yes. Which... Um, so I wanted to ask you what when you when you first kind of got into all this. I mean, you didn't just all of a sudden. Yes, you may have claimed yourself the king of sales, but tell me where this all started. Like, how did you get into how did you get into sales? And you know, what would be some advice for somebody who's new in sales right now, who's maybe just trying to get their business off the ground? What would you tell them? Well, as an entrepreneur, or as my father referred to me as a businessman, because. The word entrepreneur didn't exist when my dad or my grandfather were in business for themselves. It was pretty evident that if I was going to do something, I had to sell something. If I was going to amount to something, because I realized that I was going to be the best standard bearer for my company. And I had the gift of gab, but I didn't really understand the science of selling. And so I took a pause from one business to the other and had a two year stint of learning how to sell in um, 
an MLM environment, which in, I mean, it used to be called, uh, I think it was multi-level marketing. Now it's called direct selling. But a lot of people referred to it during the time that I did it as pyramiding because you <laughs> built a thing underneath of you. And I, I asked one woman, I said, what do you do when there's no more people left? And she goes, well, it's easy. You go to the next city. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> So that that didn't work out too well for the people that were doing it, although a lot can be said for for companies like Amway or Herbalife that are still there after many, many decades. Yeah. But the bottom line for me was I wanted to do my own thing. I didn't want to rely on somebody else's supply chain. So I started to manufacture my own stuff and I went and sold it in Manhattan where you're supposed to sell stuff. And it was a tough environment, but I was so good at it that I was able to overcome it. Well, when I began to write about it, and I think this is a very important part of this process, I wrote about what I knew to be true from me selling. I didn't go to somebody else's research and call 10,000 people to see what they were thinking. I just did it based on my own million dollar sales abilities. And what I found was that not only did people read it, but they were willing to take action as a result of it. And I learned that on accident. <clears throat> um, and my first year writing was 1992. I went to my one of my mentors, a guy named Ty Boyd, who has unfortunately passed on. And he did a thing on customer service and I wrote two columns on it. And I called the business journal and I said, hey, would you mind if I offered something free by fax? And they said, oh, sure. Thinking nothing would happen. And I offered this, Ty Boyd's 51 ways to get closer to your customer. Just give me your letterhead, write the word Ty Boyd on it, and we'll fax you back his 51 ways. Okay, fine. You got 300 faxes the first day. The paper jammed at the business journal because they were using that cucumber paper, the cheapest crap you could possibly get. Yeah. And they called me and begged me to change the number on the fax machine to my own number because their machine jammed and their paper deadline was the following day and they, they were going to miss their deadline. But I said, hey, this is something. And I kept offering it, kept offering it. And eventually I had within two months, I had three fax machines and a full-time person doing nothing but answering faxes. <laughs> Some people may not even know what a fax machine is, but this is like well, the, first, but, this is like the origin sure story of the lead magnet right here. Yeah. Let me give you the philosophy behind this that worked. People were interested enough in what I wrote to read all the way down to the very last sentence and then take action. Now think about that. I, I didn't put the facts back until the very end, even below, it was, uh, it was above my, 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 uh, my bio. <laughs> but people, hundreds of people every week took action. And it became a lead generator. It became, a, you know, Harvey McKay flew to Charlotte. I had just written two columns about him and I, met him at the airplane like at 1130 at night and gave him a box, like a shoe box, a big shoe box. There were 578 leads in there for the McKay 66. Wow. And a little shark, a little um, Thai beanie baby shark on the top of it to, you know, make it kind of cool. And we're walking to my car at the airport and he goes, I don't know what to, I've never had anyone do this for me before. What can I do for you? I said, I didn't do this to get something. I did this to just honor you. And he said, all right, I'll write the, I'll write the, the, the uh, cover quote for your next book. I'm like, okay, thanks, which he did. And if you have the customer satisfaction book there, um, you'll see Harvey McKay in the upper left-hand corner. This one Isn't that here. crazy? And yeah. that was from giving him 570 something leads. That's I didn't cool. ask him, hey, would you please write a – no, no, no. I gave him something, asked for nothing, and then he offered it. That's a philosophy that bears repeating at our mastermind coming up in a couple of days. I, um, I'll bring that book out and explain what giving value first is. Well, that was – and that was one of the, you know, first lessons I learned from you. And, you know, it's it's interesting because I reread this book – Every year. Yeah, thanks. And this is the best selling sales book of all time. A lot of people right. don't know this. They don't realize this book has sold more copies in the category of sales than any other book. 
That's it's an incredible achievement, Jeffrey. Yeah. And I didn't even know myself. Ray Bard told me it's millions and millions of copies. And the book, you somebody could read this book right now. When did you write this book? Two thousand and four. Two thousand and four. So I could read this book right now, and they would think you wrote it last week. Right, except for the fact that there's no social media in it. Everything else is completely brand Doesn't matter. Different. All of it can be applied to social media. What, oh, you just, totally. what you just shared with the the idea of, you know, just giving somebody something of great value first, and then at the end of it, a call to action. Yep. A call to action sends, you know, gets their collection, you collect their information. I mean, it was a fax number at that time, but you still get their information and maybe some additional contact information. You'll send yep. back something of free. That is the basis of good online marketing today. People are doing it in all types of forms, right? They're giving away eBooks, free reports, checklists, cheat sheets, webinars, free trainings online. I do the same thing. If you give enough value first, people will happily want exactly. to, get, to give exactly. you the information in exchange. You were doing that with fax machines. That's insane. And But, the, but there's a lot of timeless wisdom in this book. In fact, a couple of, I have a, this is not the copy I actually have marked up. This is one of the nicer because the one I actually have that's marked up doesn't look this pretty. I, could, <laughs> I should actually show it. Um, it's just faded and old now and you know, I've, I've written in it and everything else. But you have in the middle of the book on page 54, an entire principle and chapter on personal branding. I mean, there weren't a lot of people talking about personal branding. No. Well, it, I'll tell you, you why. Computers. That's about it. Huh? I wrote it because my column in the paper gave me personal branding. And they I had so much branding, I was asked to be on the CNN uh, financial one, whatever it was called at the time, CNN, FN, or something like that, financial network, to do a, an, a, uh, a live interview about the customer loyalty book. And I did it about branding because I, my book was branded. I... <laughs> Two things happened on that show that were monumental for me. Um, the woman who was going to interview me, you know, they stand you up next and you have this mugshot of the camera. And I asked the guy, I said, let me know when I'm about to go on, when you're about to give the shot of me. And he goes, OK. And he goes like this. And I went, <laughs> OK, that was number one. And the, the title of the book is Customer Satisfaction is Worthless, Customer Loyalty is Priceless. And the woman asked me, what's the difference between satisfaction and loyalty? And I said, well, would you rather your husband be satisfied or loyal? <laughs> and she was, there was like radio silence. And I used that forever. I mean, I made it up on the spot. Yeah. And I've used it for 20 years since then. That's awesome. Well, it, this, and by the way, that's a masterclass in how to title a book. Yeah, it is. It, it isn't just it isn't just customer satisfaction is worthless. Customer loyalty is priceless. It's how to make customers love you, keep them coming back, and tell everyone they know. And now, it's the best book on customer service I've ever read. I agree. I the book was customer going to be loyalty. called "Customer Satisfaction is Worthless." Yeah. And Ray Bard, the publisher, said, "No, we're going to add customer loyalty is priceless." Yeah. Like, Oh, way to go. And then it was too long of a title. So look how the cover's designed to where it doesn't occupy the whole thing. Yeah. It's just, it's an absolutely amazingly well-designed book by a buddy of mine in Charlotte here, Gary Hickson. And um, it just happened. I mean, from that, and by the way, when I, when I was on that CNN show, the book that night when the show aired went to number 10 overall on Amazon. And I go, Oh, and this is 1998 when nothing happened. You know what right. I mean? It was this is a different world 20 years ago. Yeah, 22 years ago. Um, but it all of a sudden it was like, wow, look at this. And I realized that media played a major role in what you do, and branding played a major role in what you do. And I just put myself out there from that point on, and, and gave talks about it. You you have a story that you tell that I'd like for you to share with the audience here is you wrote a book called the little platinum book of cha-ching. I yeah. love this book. I love this picture of the cash register on the book. Yeah. And 32.5 strategies to ring your own cash register of business and personal success. Um, and it's a book 
based on the principles of Patterson. And I want you to share a little bit about, if you if you can, the story you shared about how you got this book written. Sure. Because um, there's a lot of people listening who want to know creative ways of approaching potential clients and and, and creative, it's creativity plus balls. <laughs> yeah. Um I gave a talk to the National Cash Register Company, which John Patterson had founded in 1880, realized that he was the grandfather of selling and sales, did a little bit of research to have an understanding about it. And I was friendly with the CEO of NCR, and I flew there to Dayton, Ohio. And <laughs> interestingly, uh, flying in the face of disruption, I got there only to meet the CEO. So I had a drag bag with me and, and my computer bag, everything. So the, the CEO of the company, Howard Lance at the time, comes out to meet me in the lobby. And he already knew me because I'd given a speech just keep that in mind, that blew his salespeople away. So he says, hey, can I help you with your bags? I go, sure. So now I got, you're supposed to not bring bags to a meeting. But now I got the CEO of a Fortune 500 company dragging my bags into the meeting. Like, how, do you be, how, do you get, how do you get better than that? So I get in there and I explain to him that I want to do a book on the selling principles of John Patterson founder of National Cash Register Company, I will, you give me 50 grand to write the book. I'll give you 10,000 copies of the book after it's written. And he picks up his phone and says, I need a check made out to Jeffrey Gittimer for $50,000 right away. Boom. No, like, send me a proposal, none of that bullshit. It was just boom. And I, I walked out of there in under an hour with a check for 50 grand to write a book and uh, then Pearson took took 120,000 copies of the book. And it was an absolute one of the most profitable things I ever did in the book business, literally. And, so and it was and creative and fun. Yeah. And totally fun. So I had to go to um, Dayton, Ohio and do research for like a week. And there's a, a huge epilogue to this. Some guy knew I was in Dayton because I'm writing the book and I posted a couple things about it. He calls me on the phone and says, hey, would you like to buy a few books from John Patterson's library? And like a fool, I said, oh, yeah. I should have said, well, what, how much? You know, what do you, I should have negotiated a little, but I didn't. I paid whatever the guy wanted. I got a dozen books from John Patterson's actual library, one of which was the Arson Sweat Martin book, He Who Thinks He Can, He Can Who Thinks He Can, written in 1908. And he, and Patterson, it was his personal copy, and he underlined all of the Martin quotes that he thought were the best, including every child should be taught to expect success, which I've used literally as a mantra from Martin since I read it and it gave me the chills. So think about the tale of that and all the things that Patterson did that led me to, you know, do talks for NCR all over the world, the book that came out, the sales that were made, but the Martin book I have in my library. Yeah. It belongs in the Smithsonian Institute. And I have it. And I, I'll, every once in a while in the morning, I'll just, I keep it real, right by my chair in the morning. Every once in a while, I'll just pick it up and leaf through it and just look at John Patterson's hand underlined stuff. It's, it's chilling. Yeah. But that's what you get from giving value, by the way. All that came from value. And you you share some of those quotes in your latest book that you wrote. Yeah, I do. Um, called Get Shit Done. Get Shit Done, yeah. And uh, I'm honored to have a signed copy, signed cover copy here. It's cool. Um, my, one of my, my favorite quote in it, I just lost the page, but I have it here, is, <laughs> I love this quote. You don't know this is my favorite quote in the book. The problem with most people is that they fail to balance their use of time because they think they must handle every urgent matter themselves. Big mistake and big misuse of time. That's gold for everyone listening, watching, and reading this book. And we try to do too there's, much. There's one thing that goes with that. There's another quote elsewhere in the book. Yeah. The salespeople 
in the sales call are too focused on their income and not enough focused on the outcome of the sale. And those quotes go hand in hand. You, you have right below it the rule, the rule of more the more. The more you delegate the little things, the more time you'll have for the big things. That's priceless. Yeah. That's a great book. And, and Wiley, in their ignorance, will not back it to the way that it should be. <laughs> Nothing I can do about it. The publisher rules and they decide what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. The book has sold very well, but not nearly what it should have sold had I had a, a publisher that would back it. And maybe we'll send a copy of this to uh, the CEO of Wiley, the, uh, a link to play the, uh, the podcast. I, I have personally spoken to at least 30 people who have read this book and yeah. find it invaluable. Yeah. It's so good. And you quote, um, you have, I, I think you have like, you have, you always quote yourself, which I really like. There's a lesson in that too. But you quote Orson Sweat, Mar uh, Sweat Martin several times in here, right? There's one pages. Of my, one of my favorite is the world makes way for the man with an idea. Exactly. And isn't that cool? Yeah. <laughs> because that was written in what, 1908. That is so true ago. today. That's it's so 110 true. years old. And it's more applicable today. Yeah. Don't give me your set of slides from your marketing department that are going to put me to sleep. Right. Bring one. Do you want my slides, sir? Or do you want an idea? I'll take an idea every time. And that's that's something I'm trying to get people to understand that they want to they want to they need to they need to lead with when they're approaching prospective customers is they'll say, how do I make a sale? Or how do I make you prospect? Joe, how do I find new clients? And I always say, well, what ideas do you take time to research to find out that you could have for just them? Not okay. an idea you have for everybody because people can buy, you know, in my world, they can buy Facebook marketing services and Facebook advertising services anywhere. Why should they buy it from you? What's the new idea and the new strategies you're bringing to the table that is going to compel them, going to motivate them to say, I want to go with you because you seem to have the best ideas for my business. People seem to, they try, they can't differentiate with services any, anymore, right? So yeah. ideas, just like he was saying, people make way for the, for the man with the idea. You had the idea for NCR. It was a ballsy one. You, he's carrying your bags for you and you're proposing a $50,000 upfront. Is that classic or what? <clears throat> it's classic, but he made way for an idea. You have another story you share about um, how you did that with Mad Magazine and some other places. We'll talk about that on future shows. Let um, me throw this at you, Joe, because this is really important. And this is yeah. a clip that you can cut out of here and it's gold forever. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to close an appointment with somebody, you can say, Mr. Jones, um, I'm coming to you with an idea, not a slide deck, an idea. And all I'm asking is if you like it, you run with it. Fair enough? Yeah, that, now you can use it in your presentation. You can use it to close an, uh, a, an appointment, anything. I'm bringing you an idea and all I ask is if you like it, you run with it, fair enough. And they go, yeah. <laughs> and they, you just committed a, a close that's no pressure, no, the, the guy's perceiving, wow, this could be a valuable idea. I better listen to it. But really? can you imagine saying, listen, I'm, I'm bringing you 20 slides uh, <laughs> to bore the crap out of you for an hour. And all I ask is if you like it, you buy my stuff. No, I'm not going to do that. But an idea? Whoa, now you're talking. Yeah. Now, why, why do people not take the time to research their customers enough to, to figure out what idea would, would be ideal or would help or make a difference for that client? Is it laziness? Is it not, you know, what is it? It's laziness. <clears throat> it's um, not thinking that they can. Yeah. It's not, you know, self doubt. It's mm. limited self image. Who am I to bring somebody an idea? Brilliant. Um, it's yeah. low self esteem. You know, it's all the things that you that you would think it would be, and more. They don't recognize the potential of it. So instead of watching some stupid ass news show at night, or some but some uh, sitcom or something, do research into the company to figure out what you can do to bring an idea to them. 
Yeah. Call other people. Call your friends. Call employees for the company. Go on LinkedIn. Find out what they're doing. Go to their website. Invest an hour, and you'll come up with an idea. What do you say to the, to the to the people? And I know we don't play on this side where they they may say, "Well, no, don't give your ideas away for free. People should pay for that idea." Right. People who say that, I love those people because they're idiots, <laughs> and no one will ever. I mean, what you know? Why, why would you? Why would you not bring an idea to somebody that you think would be of value, even if they don't buy it? Yeah. So the people who are the same people that say don't bring an idea and give it are the same people that try to find the pain and manipulate you to a sale. Yeah. It's all bullshit, and it's all over. I heard somebody who teaches he was teaching you know, teaches advertising and, and digital marketing, Frank Kern. He said the best way to get people to hire you to help them is by actually helping them first. Right. Exactly. And like, I just, I love that. it's the yeah. same concept, but, and it seems so simple. It's obvious, right? There we go. There's the obvious and obvi the ob obvious Adams. That's the obvious, but people, they try to make it more complex than that. And I, I, I think you, you touched on something though that's, that's really important, which is sometimes it's self-worth. It's, it's who am I? It's self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And, and one of your books, all of your books, your attitude permeates through the, through, I've never, you, you have uh, a contagious, optimistic, yes attitude. And, and you wrote Joe, about keep it. Keep in mind before you go to the next thing. You wrote about it. It's not the fact that you're spilling your candy, which is what they call it in 1973. <laughs> it's that you're giving candy. That's the value first process. Yeah. And would you rather, wouldn't you rather just say, hey, let's have a, a couple of marshmallows together? Oh, yeah. Hey, and I brought hot chocolate, too. <laughs> oh, and wait, you want some s'mores with that? We got that, too. Yeah, right. So it's a matter of breaking bread, feeling good, giving the idea, developing some kind of camaraderie, not being a jackass. Yeah. And very quick, people are going to think that's your only idea. idea. Go away, dude. <laughs> so I, don't, I don't want you or your idea. Go away. And that's the new way of selling, the new way forward is is harmonizing not let's, manipulating well let's let's talk about that because everyone right now we're coming out of this crazy time yeah in, uh, in our country We've never seen anything like this people some people are stuck yep scared some people are scared some people are scared um others are are saying you know how do i move forward in the new normal right and 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 just you're one of the first people i heard call it the new normal and what advice would you give to somebody who's saying to themselves right now, how do I create momentum of my business in a time like this? The first to attract, I'll, I'll give a context to attract new clients and new business. What should they be doing? Call 10 customers who have bought from you in the past. Find out how they're doing. Find out what's been happening. Find out what they need. Ask how you can help and then actually give help, but also find out what caused them to buy from you in the past. Okay. You can take that information and it will actually give you momentum, peace of mind, self-confidence to move forward. Now you can call new people. But if you don't know the history, there's no reason for you to move forward, none whatsoever. You can't make a call, geez, I know we've all been going through, going through. no, no, no. This is not something where you can just take it half-assed because this has never happened before in our history. So you're going to have to develop an approach that is meaningful, that is emotionally engaging, and one that has some value. Show me the value and I'll give you the sale. Oh, wow, this is a, you know, I don't use this on StreamYard myself and I really should. Um, what, this is one of your quotes, show me the value and I'll give you the sale. Exactly. And that was in the um, 21.5 Unbreakable Laws of Selling. And my wife, it's, she says it's the best sales book I've ever read. I, it is. Ah, it is Charlie, you see, hey, dog. Aside from the Little Red Book, this is definitely my, yeah. my, my favorite sales book that you had, you had read. And I know we were the social media agency to help you when you were writing that to get the word out. But that was really the hit home of you know, doing, doing the, uh, or giving value first. And the other thing that kind of came out of maybe not that book, but it's something that you say, it's my favorite quote from you, period. It's my overall favorite quote, because everything you're saying, I can hear 
little voices in the crowd in the audience going, that seems like a lot of work. It does seem like a lot of work. Wait, you want me to call on the phone? Wait, you want me to call past customers? Some of them may not like me anymore. That seems like hard work. You want me to research for an hour on one potential prospect when Joe's telling me to make a list of 100 of them? Yep. You know, salespeople are so smart that they overlook the obvious. <laughs> And they, they would rather, you know, we live in a society where everything is so available and so easy that they tend to ignore the things that are going to actually make them an owner rather than simply a salesperson. Yeah. And in our mastermind, by the way, I'm going to talk about, are you an owner or are you a renter? You know, you take a whole different approach when you own a car rather than when you rent a car. Yeah. And I'm looking at this from the perspective of now is the time for you to take ownership of your career regardless of what your bosses are saying, regardless of what your company is saying, you have a responsibility to go out and communicate a value message to your, to your customers who need it. They need the encouragement. They need the, the, uh, the wisdom and the hope that you can now, now's not the time to challenge them. One of the most bullshit things I've ever heard about sales in my life is some 28 year old kid coming in and challenging a 55 year old CEO. That guy better have an ass pad because he's going to get thrown out of the office on his ass. <laughs> but I think that that now is a time, as Martin Luther King said, now is the time. And now is the time to be valuable. Now is the time to give an idea. Now is the time to show your help. Now is the time to share your focus because they may not be wanting to buy from you right now. But if you're a value provider, they'll buy from you when the time is right. You'll stay top of mind. And, and Jeffrey, you are walking that talk right now every single day because you've gone live as of the time of the recording uh, over 170 days in a row. Is that correct? Correct. That's you've correct. Gone, you've gone Facebook live on your own social media channels without missing a day. Is that a true statement? Yep. And it's going to go on for at least a year. That's the goal right now is to hit 365. Yeah. But, but um, no one like, oh, I'm sick this morning. I can't do it. You've gone live at 10 a.m. Eastern time every single day without missing a missing a missing a step, without skipping a beat. 10 a.m. on your social media channels, people can just search your name and find. People you. need help, Joe. Yeah, they, 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 that's what you're, you're, doing. you're giving that help right every single day with small little bite-sized nuggets of help, and it's commendable. It's awesome. And people from all over the world show up at 9:59 a.m. East Coast time. Yeah. They'll, they'll be, you know, I, I look at the views when I've done my show, it's somewhere between 1,000 and 2,500, depending on the day. And by the end of the week, it's 5,000. And then there's 10,000 interactions. I mean, it, it's it's unbelievable what's happened to that thing. So unbelievable. what would you say to the person who's watching this? Is like, well, I don't know what to go live about or what would I go live about that my customers, because I represent, maybe they, maybe they represent a company or, or maybe they're a new entrepreneur and they don't feel like they have an audience. What would you tell them? Figure it out. Yeah. Because the world's going to pass you by, dude. D decide what your expertise is. Mm -hmm. Decide where you think you can be a valued member of your business community and pick a topic and just start talking about it. Yeah. But put a, a, you, you know, from an SEO standpoint, they have to put the keywords in the, in the title. So people that are looking for a topic rather than a person would find it and do it at least once a week, but consistently. I'm 9.59 a.m. every morning. So you can be anytime you want, as long as you do it every Monday at 10.03, but make it an odd time so that people remember it and, and go and just tell people to set their watch. I have had 100 people tell me that they set their watch to 9.58 so they can be on. And be first. It's crazy. Yeah. They, they try their, their ass off to be first. I remember when I you talked about figuring out what your expertise is in in 2009 we were trying to recover from 2008 mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I had a client of mine who asked me if and I was doing at the time I was trying to do sales training nobody was booking sales training nobody was hiring people for the stuff that I was offering and one of my but one of my clients who I was helping with website stuff and copy copywriting on their website said, would you be willing to also help me with my social media management? And nobody was outsourcing or managing other people's social media at the time. He just said, I just don't want anything to do with it. And I thought, well, you know, I think other businesses will be willing to pay for this because they, if they haven't figured out social media, 
right. Somebody else that might be their competitor might, and I'll have an angle here. But I had to learn it. So I to figure it out, as you say, figure it out. I literally walked into Barnes and Noble and I walked out with like 11 books on social media, all different topics from I had a book called Twitter Power. I had a book on LinkedIn. I had a book on blogging. And I remember my wife saying, what are you doing? I said, I have to learn social media because I just sold it to a client, to an, to an older client. And and I think other businesses will buy this if I can stay ahead of where they're at in their knowledge base of this of all this stuff. And no one's going to go read 11 books, but I will. Well, fast forward three months, uh, four months, five months later, we had an article written up about us in the Des Moines Business Record, where you had an article or you had mm -hmm. a column. Yep. And in the Des Moines Business Record, they they said uh, at the time we had thirty five clients already inside of that inside of that uh, four month span, and we were on the we were we had a you know picture of us in front of our offices and all this. It was ridiculous, but. We had a friend of mine comes over to my house, good friend of mine, and we had done sales training stuff in the past together. And he sits on my doorstep with me. We're sitting on my stoop. And he says, Joe, he says, uh, you're the sales training guy. Like, how come I saw you in the paper uh, for being a social media expert? I said, well, now I'm a social media expert. <laughs> and he goes, what do you mean? I said, I'm a social media expert now. I said, I've read a bunch of books. I'm learning it online. I've been blogging. I'm 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 helping clients with their online presence with Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. And we're helping set up people with their own blogs. And this is remember 2010. And and as we had gotten into this, and he was like, Yeah, but you're this sales training guy. I said, We can be with whoever we want to be if we just want to claim the expertise right. and want it. Exactly. I was going to figure it out. And I didn't have courses. I didn't have online programs like we have now. There's so many shortcuts now that um, figuring out was my, that was my mantra back then. And I think that when you're, if you have a strong enough why, back then I only had six children. Right. <laughs> it was still a pretty strong why. Um, that was my motivation and drive to figure it out. And so if someone's watching right now and they don't, they, maybe they haven't figured this, they don't have that self-motivation right now. What would you say to get someone to let a spark under them to say, man, this is what you're going to have to do right now to start get, get going? Well, don't just look where the money is. Look to do something that you could love if the money was there. And try to approach it from that perspective, because if you only seek money, number one, you won't get it. And number two, you'll be miserable. And I think that the, the, the challenge that anybody has, you know, look what you did. You did it, but you love it. Yeah. And that gives you the passion to, to learn more, do more, sell more, you know, be better at it. Otherwise, you're, you've turned into a curmudgeon. And you go home and you no, oh, a tough day. We got beer. We're on TV. No, you go home and you study. I, we've talked to, look, audience from all over the world. Joe Soto and I have talked to each other at six o'clock in the morning and midnight and done it many, many times because we're workers, we're students. We're putting things together that other people will consider valuable and then buy. And we consult with each other. I'm interested in what Joe knows that I don't know and vice versa. And so you have to find in your own world something that you love to do or could love to do, and then dig into it. Now it's the easiest time to do it because nothing matters anymore. <laughs> you can't say, well, the last time we had this COVID thing. No, there was no last time. Yeah, This is brand new. Go do whatever you want. Emerge victorious. Say, oh, you know, the last six months I've been studying whatever it is, and now you're a world-class expert. Believe me, and, and you, can, you can make it happen for yourself with personal branding, with social media, with all of your outreach, with your with your social platform, just go. Start doing videos every day. Start, start. Yeah, and the the uh, the personal branding aspect. I mean, I I don't know. I, I go back and look at people that you know some of the biggest um, brands in the world, even brands like Apple, had a personal branding component to it with Steve Jobs. Yep, big time. Okay. So Tesla, the deal. Tesla would not be Tesla with e Elon Musk. He didn't even want to be personal branded, but he is a person. Right. He has no choice. He has no choice. He is Charles Barkley, same. But here's here's the deal. You may think, well, suppose people don't like me. Dude, 
You think people, all people like me? No, they don't. Yeah. The difference between me and you is I don't give a shit. I'm from Philly. No one likes us. We don't care. And so the challenge for you is take whatever you're going to do and appeal to 51% of the people. That's it. That's a landslide victory. And it's also a landslide profit maker if you do it right. So who cares if one out of two people don't like you? The other one bought. Yeah. If you, if you go one for three for 20 years, you're in the Hall of Fame as one of the best who ever lived. Now, Jeffrey, you're you're a um, not just a multi uh, time multi time is that how you say it uh, best selling author? Yes. New York New York Times best selling author. Yes. Not only have you wrote the best selling sales book ever, um, but you also are a Hall of Fame speaker. Mm -hmm. And so now that you know, not many people are hiring people to go speak, right? You're seizing the day with making your platform virtual by going live every day, but you're yep. also doing virtual summits. You're doing virtual online courses. You're doing other things to, to, uh, to shift. <laughs> I, right. I don't know, most people are using the word pivot, but I really like the word shift to shift your attention and your efforts to adapt to the world. And it's commendable because uh, most people, you know, mo some people, they don't know how to adapt to things that change so fast. So what's, you have a, uh, um, an online training yes. that you did. Yes. That I watched last week and I think there's a replay still up of it. Mm -hmm. What was the name of that? Um, it's a recovery course and it's, it's for the, for the thing COVID, by the way, somebody just posted in the chat that is this a replay or can, can I yeah. ask questions? You can take, you'll, you'll ask some questions at the end. You're watching this, live uh unless you're not and <laughs> but this particular one for for you uh um uh, somebody from far far away berend berend just put your question in we'll answer it now um this this recovery program is for any salesperson who is looking to be able to make a mark uh i don't know the i i can't put anything in the chat here, this oh, there is, it is. This, yeah, this is a yeah. free training that you did on this. Yeah, about an hour on, yeah. on three or four major things that you need to do right now in order to be able to recover and emerge as a winner, not a watcher or a whiner. Those are the three kinds of people that are going to emerge. Winner, watcher, whiner. And your job is to emerge as a winner. And I'm, I give you the formula in this in this free training. Yeah, and free training is an understatement. This is a the truest definition of the word, a real masterclass in yeah, selling you. in the new normal. And the idea is the amount of pages of notes you'll take from this free training alone will be worth it. And I hope anyone who watches or hears this goes to gettermertraining.com forward slash replay and, and catch it there live. That will also get you on Jeffrey's list. That's a list you want to be on. It's the only list, Jeffrey that I think I've been on for over a decade wow. um, cool. and wouldn't get off of it. Even so, it Joe, let me throw this at you. Um, there are people who are going to want to go live and ask yourself, if you're thinking about going live, ask yourself, is the information that I'm going to be giving, could that be considered a masterclass? If it is, then keep giving it. And if it isn't, then realize you're just making a pitch for somebody for something and it's not going to happen. So yeah. you have to self-evaluate it. And the easiest way to do that is just watch it yourself, pre-record it, and then watch it. Yeah. Excellent. Great advice. Um, Jeffrey, last thing. We're, um, that's, so I just gave away one of the ways that people can learn more about you. How else? Where else can they learn more about you? Just go to Gittimer.com. If you go to Gittimer.com, you're going to win. Or follow me anywhere, either Gittimer or Jeffrey Gittimer. We'll get you to Facebook. We'll get you to, you know, LinkedIn. We'll get you to Instagram. I'm on every social platform that's, that means anything. And um, I post a lot of stuff on YouTube. I have a live video every day on LinkedIn that, that, that's edited from my show. There's, you, you can find me easily. And your new book coming out. Will tell you. Hmm? Your new book is what and coming out when? Uh, new book is coming out by the end of the year. It's go live. 
this may be available to some of the people coming to the mastermind. We'll have to see. What's the, sub, what's the subtitle of that book? Stay out of New Jersey. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> it's Turn Virtual Connections into Paying Customers. Turn Ooh. Virtual Connections into Paying, paying customers. customers. And this is a major publisher who came to you and said, we want yeah. you to do the book on yeah. – how to go live to get and earn that earn I call it earning and capturing the attention of your ideal client. Just just the fact that they came and offered me the deal was was an honor enough. Well, you've written 17 other books. That's true. That's true. And many of them have hit the New York Times bestseller list. So yeah. um Jeffrey, thanks for being my guest today. Let's uh uh end here and then we'll open up and take some questions. Okay, cool. All right, a couple of questions here. And you're welcome to drop your questions in the comments. Um, somebody said, is he really the king of sales? Tell me. Um, I think if you watch the whole video, you'll understand why. Somebody said they love your shirt, Jeffrey. <laughs> the, shirt, uh, the shirt will give you my philosophy and also make you think about it. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Um, Steph said she bought one of my courses and I changed the way that I, that, that, uh, I teach now. And I don't know if she's talking about you or me, but, uh, both of us, I, my model, my teaching style off of you. Cool. Um, well, there's a lot of comments for something we didn't really announce. I know, but now I'm going to promote the heck out of it. It's going to be Good. great. Um, yeah, ask questions. So, okay. Take whatever you're going to do and appeal to 51% of the people. <laughs> yes. If you don't need, you can just do 33 and a third and you're fine. That's right. That's right. Jeffrey, this has been great. Um, yeah. I'll go back in and, and answer comments later. And I'm going to encourage you to do the same. We're going to, we're going to be sending this out to a lot of people. Okay. Here's uh, a question. So he says, my question is about earning money online. When going into this space is dropping out of high school for the decades to come a high risk or a good opinion. I'm 17. Wow. Stay in school till you finish high school, hopefully you weren't indoctrinated by the 1619 revisionist history of the United States of America, but you can make more money staying home and creating an online business than you ever could paying some college $50,000 a year to stuff their opinions up your butt. Jeffrey, do you, did you go to college? Yes. Did you I finish? went to Temple University. I went for five years on the you don't quite graduate program, which I completed successfully. I dropped out of school because they didn't, they, it wasn't relevant. I was working for Did my you go to college for five years, then drop out. Yeah. Well, you, if you're Jewish, your parents have the fit. If you don't finish college and get a degree, <laughs> you know, it's a cultural thing. So I stayed as long as I could day school, night school, went overseas <laughs> for a while. It was during the Vietnam war. I, I mean, it was just, it was a crazy time, but the challenge is this. Once I realized that I could that I could go teach my professors about economics, about finance, and about statistics, then I realized what a, what a joke some of these business courses really are. And yeah. they try to make something complicated that's quite simple. Yeah, yeah, awesome, awesome. All right, thank you, sir. We'll end it here. Appreciate everybody being on here and joining you. I'm going to be doing this weekly. I got to figure out at the right time I'm going to be doing this, but uh, we're going to be doing it weekly after I get a couple of these in the can. Yeah. Thank you know what? You might want to think about Wednesday because it's hump day. Yeah. And uh, you can rename hump day something else <laughs> and go on every single Wednesday to just kind of give you that lift that you need till the end of the week. Yeah. That'd be great. I Good. think that's an idea that might work because Monday people are too busy and, you know, yeah, I want to keep it sometime between the hours of 11 and 2 because that seems to be a good time for everyone in the world. So go on at 11, 11. 11, I know. There you go. That's like the, the magic gold. That's right. I 11, 11, day. Day. And you know, you're not, it's not a matter of hump. It's a matter of work your ass off. Yeah, for the rest of the week. Make it awesome. Right. Planning Thank for the weekend. Everybody. Dumbest awesome. thing we can do. Joe. Awesome as always. Thank you. Uh, we're going to have you back on here, of course. And I'll be seeing you tomorrow. I can't wait. And Wyatt and Lynette. At the beach. See you can't guys. Wait. You guys take care of yourselves. Cheers. Cheers. Health. Stay healthy. Stay safe.